yoga therapy and practice, trauma-sensitive yoga, principles, practice, and research. This is printed in the International Journal of Yoga Therapy, number 19, for the Trauma Center at Justice Resource Center, Brookline, Massachusetts. Abstract. Since 2003, the Trauma Center Yoga Programs at the Justice Resource Institute in Brookline, Massachusetts have been providing yoga to a variety of trauma survivors, including war veterans, rape survivors, at-risk youth, and survivors of chronic childhood abuse and neglect. Pilot study results have demonstrated the benefits of yoga for individuals suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. The Trauma Center Yoga Program also trains yoga instructors and clinicians in how to offer yoga to trauma survivors. This paper describes best principles and practices for teaching yoga to survivors of trauma. Trauma and Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder, PTSD. Trauma exposure is ubiquitous in our society. Over half the general population report having had exposure to at least one traumatic event over their lifetime with 5% of men and 10.4% of women developing post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. As described in the dsm 4 TRPTSD is characterized by persistent re-experiencing of the traumatic event intrusions, persistent avoidance of stimuli associated with the trauma, the numbing of general responsiveness, and persistent symptoms of increased physical arousal. Individuals with PTSD have a difficult time calming down or self-regulating reflected in higher levels of sympathetic nervous system activation and lower heart rate variability, a marker of the autonomic nervous system's flexibility. PTSD has a debilitating negative impact on the overall quality of life of the individual. 74% of the individuals diagnosed with PTSD are symptomatic for more than six months and may experience symptoms for years. Individuals diagnosed with PTSD have a high likelihood of being diagnosed with another psychological disorder. The U.S. National Comorbidity Survey found that an estimated 88% of people with PTSD had at least one other co-occurring psychiatric illness. In an Australian study with 10,000 participants, women diagnosed with PTSD were 23 times more likely to develop depression, 10 times more likely to develop generalized anxiety disorder, and 10 times more likely to develop panic disorder. Given the prevalence of trauma exposure in our society, Effective treatment interventions for individuals who develop PTSD are essential. Unfortunately, trauma has long-lasting effects on mental health and is extremely treatment-resistant. Bradley and Weston's meta-analysis of 26 studies found that 45% of therapy clients with PTSD remain significantly symptomatic after treatment and two-thirds of those who initially responded to treatment relapsed six months after treatment. There's a great need to continue to explore more effective treatment interventions and adjunctive therapies for trauma survivors. Yoga for PTSD. An essential aspect of recovering Recovering from trauma is learning ways to calm down and self-regulate. For thousands of years, yoga has been offered as a practice that helps one calm the mind and body. More recently, research has shown that yoga practices, including meditation, relaxation, and physical postures, can reduce autonomic sympathetic activation, muscle tension, and blood pressure 
improve neuroendocrine and hormonal activity, decrease physical symptoms and emotional distress, and increase quality of life. For those reasons, yoga is a promising treatment or adjunctive therapy for addressing the cognitive, emotional, and physiological symptoms associated with trauma and PTSD specifically. Overview of the Trauma Center Yoga Program. The Yoga Center Yoga Program works with trauma-focused clinicians to provide ongoing yoga classes to women and men who are survivors of physical, emotional, and sexual abuse and neglect or other severe traumas. Group yoga classes are offered in a variety of settings, from the trauma center itself to veteran centers, residential schools for teens, domestic violence shelters, rape crisis centers, and other community and residential facilities. Our work at the trauma center yoga program is based on the clinical premise that the experience of trauma affects the entire human organism, body, mind, and spirit, and that the whole organism must be engaged in the healing process. Traditional trauma therapy is talk-based and focuses on the mind, the story, tending to regulate the physical, visceral, and body-based dimension of trauma. Yoga, when skillfully employed, can uniquely address the physical needs of a trauma survivor and provide a way for a trauma survivor to cultivate a friendly relationship to his or her body through gentle breath and movement practices. Our primary mentor from within the clinical community is Dr. Bessel van der Kolk, a world-renowned leader in the research and treatment of PTSD. Dr. van der Kolk was among those responsible for codifying the original diagnosis of PTSD after the Vietnam War. The yoga program was developed by yoga teacher David Emerson in consultation with Dr. van der Kolk. Over the years, we've had several yoga teachers from the Boston area teaching classes with us and contributing their thoughts and experiences. Many of our most successful trauma-sensitive yoga teachers have Kapali, Kapala training, and we have noticed that this particular training seems to be especially conducive to developing a trauma-sensitive perspective on yoga. We also use feedback from students as a primary driving force behind the development of the Trauma Center Yoga Program. All Trauma Center Yoga teachers are registered with the Yoga Alliance at the 200 level or higher and have also completed our 40 hour certificate program. This intensive training includes present presentations by Dr. van der Kolk and other senior trauma clinicians as well as an in-depth investigation into the principles and practices of trauma-sensitive yoga outlined below. The 40-hour certificate program empowers trained yoga instructors to integrate trauma-sensitive principles into their existing classes or to start new trauma-sensitive classes. We've also developed a two-day training program for clinicians are interested in bringing some yoga into their clinical practice. Over the past two years, we've trained hundreds of clinicians from all over the United States and beyond working with trauma survivors. Research on yoga at the Trauma Center. The Trauma Center conducted a pilot study to examine the impact of its yoga program on PTSD symptoms. The aim of this study was to investigate the feasibility of having trauma survivors participate in yoga and to compare the effects of group yoga classes to a structured group treatment intervention. The participants were randomly assigned to either eight sessions of gentle 75 minute Hatha yoga classes or a dialectical behavioral therapy DBT group. Changes in symptoms were assessed through self-report inventories, measuring the severity of PTSD symptoms, positive and negative effect, and body awareness. After eight weeks, the yoga participants showed improvements in all dimensions of PTSD, 
an increase in positive effect and decrease in negative effect, and an increase in their physical vitality and body attunement. Compared to DBT participants, yoga participants reported a greater reduction in frequency of all PTSD symptoms and severity of hyperarousal symptoms, as well as greater gains in vitality and body attunement. Although the results of the study did not reach statistical significance due to its small sample size, yoga appears to be positively affect self-regulation and decrease hyperarousal, and these benefits may match or exceed those of the more commonly utilized DBT skills intervention. Given the positive initial findings of the pilot study, we are currently studying the effects of yoga on heart rate variability among tra trauma survivors, as well as conducting a larger randomized single-blind controlled study examining the efficacy of yoga in comparison with the Women's Health Awareness Control Group. Their current study is looking at women with PTSD who have been treatment resistant even after several years of some PTSD intervention, such as traditional talk therapy. We're examining whether yoga can improve the constellation of PTSD symptoms, multiple somatic complaints, social and occupational impairment, and high health care utilization that's been documented in hundreds of thousands of female trauma survivors in the United States. Overall, we hope these research projects will provide more evidence about whether yoga can not only help individuals reduce PTSD symptoms, but also improve their overall health and functioning. Principles and Practice of Trauma-Sensitive Yoga to make yoga accessible to trauma survivors, we have modified the average yoga style class, class, studio class, to guide us in these modifications, and we've identified at least five aspects of a yoga class that may require special consideration. Environment, exercises, teacher qualities, assists, and language. Each of these domains must be modified to accommodate a trauma-sensitive yoga class. Environment. The Trauma Center's yoga program is offered in a number of different environments. However, we strive to make each environment as welcoming as possible for trauma survivors. The main concern is providing a space in which participants feel safe and less vulnerable. The following simple suggestions can help to ensure this. If there's publicly exposed windows, cover them. Lighting should be soft, but not too dark. Mirrors can be an unhelpful. If there's mirrors present, you can arrange the space so the participants are not facing them. And do your best to minimize external noise. If you're in a city or there's traffic sound, that's okay, just do your best and make sure that no one will be walking in and out of the room inadvertently during the class. Example, UPS or maintenance. Make sure that you have enough props for everyone, including chairs for any chair-based work. Exercises. There's many ways to structure a yoga practice and a typical trauma center yoga class begins with a seated centering and series of warm-ups, including gentle neck stretches and shoulder rolls. The goal of the teacher during the opening of the class is to set a tone of safety, gentleness, and non-judgmental self-study that can be maintained throughout the session and eventually beyond the mat. The longest portion of the class is made up of typical yoga postures and because we have a variety of groups from young Marines just back from Iraq to older adult survivors of chronic childhood abuse and neglect, the posture choices will vary. And we might emphasize strength-oriented postures with the Marines who will tend towards gentler postures for students who have been less physically active prior to starting yoga. The important thing is that whatever we offer, we do so in a trauma-sensitive way. The ending of the class may vary as well. In some cases, we end with Shavasana, relaxation pose. 
if folks are comfortable lying down with their eyes closed. In other cases, such as if the group is particularly hypervigilant or hyperaroused, we might end in a seated rest. In every class, we always give students the option to choose a resting posture that works best for them. In most classes, there will be some folks lying on their backs, others lying on one side, and still others sitting with their eyes open. Our intention here is for our students to take some control over their experience and to find what is most restful for them. We always want to give several options not just in relaxation, but in any posture. If this doesn't work, try this or that. A big constant in trauma-sensitive yoga is the instruction. If this is uncomfortable to you for any reason, you can always come out of the posture and come back to your mindful breathing. We're teaching trauma survivors to identify what is happening right now in their body. If they detect pain on any level, we hope they will become willing and able to say, no, I will not be in pain and my opinion about what is happening to me matters and I can take control. These are therapeutic moments in class and they are extremely valuable. Our experience suggests that trauma-sensitive yoga is more about the how than the what. That said, there are some posture groups, especially hip openers, that have been particularly difficult for many trauma survivors in our classes because hip openers can be very important postures. We don't want to rule them out. And we've learned to present them in a progressive fashion. For example, we would not want to introduce happy baby pose or any other supine hip opener to a new group. We might start with a seated pose like Jhana Shurasana, head to knee pose for many weeks and then move to Baddha Konasana, bound angle pose. The next step might be something like a supine knee to chest, one leg at a time at first. And finally, it's always important to give students control over what they're doing with their body. So a simple, if this is uncomfortable for any reason, it's a necessary part of hip openers as with any other posture. <coughs> teacher qualities. We have found that a successful trauma-sensitive yoga teacher is one who's present and positive, one who's engaged welcoming and approachable. One who is very competent and at ease with the yoga material, but invites feedback and is willing to listen. But most importantly, one who makes changes when things are not working. A teacher who can be directive, but also extend an open invitation to the students to have their own experience. Try lifting your arms up, and if that is uncomfortable for any reason, you may bring your arms back to your sides. We'll do well in this setting. Problems arise when the yoga teacher tries to be a trauma expert or tries to control the experience of the student by saying, this posture is difficult for trauma survivors or this posture should really feel good. We don't do that. We also recommend some basic things teachers can do to make students more comfortable dress conservatively to minimize any distraction. Be in the room before anyone arrives if possible and extend a verbal welcome to each student in the class. Do not move around a lot and make it easy for students to know where you are at any point throughout the class. No surprises. Demonstrate a welcoming and accepting attitude throughout the class, for example, by smiling and keeping things light. Rather than being strict and critical, consider your space of instruction. In general, a slow pace works better than a rapid pace. We're teaching folks to take some time 
with their bodies and we don't want to rush them through it. There's also such a good thing as too much time in a pose. So aim for a good rhythm where students have time to understand and experience the pose without the time to dissociate or drift off. Assists. For many trauma survivors, physical assists are a clinical issue and should be treated with great care and attention. We do not offer physical assists for the first several months of an open yoga class and would suggest not doing physical assists at all if your class is limited to several weeks in duration. Verbal assists, however, can be very valuable and will show you that you're attending to your students in a nurturing way while respecting their physical space and the integrity of those boundaries. For example, rather than physically adjust a student's posture, you might suggest that the student try a block or blanket to make a posture more accessible. We recommend that instructors focus first on training for safety and then comfort accessibility. We do offer physical assists in some of our long-term classes and we found that these can have therapeutic values such as helping people tolerate nurturing, positive touch from another. However, we're primarily helping people develop self-knowledge and friendliness towards their own bodies. With some time, physical assists might serve those ends, but not necessarily. Language. Most yoga classes involve a considerable amount of talking by the yoga teacher. As the Trauma Center Yoga Program, we believe that the yoga teacher, that what the yoga teacher says and how he says it is of the utmost importance. When we sat down as a group of yoga teachers beginning to build the program, we discussed examples of instructions we had been given in actual yoga classes at good reputable studios and health clubs. And here's some examples. Push just a little farther. Hold just a little longer. Shine your nipples to the front of the room. And imagine I'm gonna come up and punch you in the stomach. I really want to feel that strong belly. You may have heard instructions like these in your own yoga classes. Maybe they made a strong impression and made you cringe, or maybe not. For trauma survivors, however, these kinds of instructions could trigger trauma-related symptoms and would probably spell the end of yoga for them. So it's easy for us to decide that we we're not going to use the words nipple in class, that we wouldn't threaten to punch our students. And it's more interesting to us that we realize much of the language used by yoga teachers <laughs> involves the teachers trying to get students to do something, to push a little farther, to try a little harder. We decided that trauma-sensitive yoga was not so much about getting students to do something, but inviting them to try something. As a result of this decision, we came up with what we call inventory, invitational language. Invitatory language involves phrases just such as when you are ready, if you like, and as you like. Students are invited to try something, but are not required, coerced, or pushed. We do not place value so much on students doing exactly what we say or pleasing us, but in being willing to listen to their own bodies and acting accordingly. This takes time and patience to develop and is one of the ways we found yoga to be the most therapeutic for trauma survivors. Our instructions are clear and simple, but we make an effort to invite students rather than to command them. Considering the following two sets of instructions, stand up tall and if you like, try standing up tall. Try giving yourself each of these instructions out loud. Get a feeling for the differences between these two simple instructions, and you'll have a clearer understanding of a key principle of trauma-sensitive yoga. Invitatory language supports the primary clinical goal of helping trauma survivors develop a friendly, non-demanding, gentle relationship with their body. Trauma survivors tend to have a deeply antagonistic relationship with the body, 
and the trauma clinicians we work with have concluded that for trauma survivors to heal, they must develop a friendly relationship with their body. This is a long and challenging path and takes great patience. For some trauma survivors, becoming friendly with the body might start with not utterly hating it. Yoga teachers need to be prepared to help people wherever they are at, at the, in the process. Choices and community. Along with the principles described above, trauma-centered yoga teachers keep in mind the healing benefits of two key elements of a group yoga practice, making choices, and community. The process of being traumatized involves a fundamental lack of choice. You were in the wrong place at the wrong time. Your choices as an individual did not matter. What happened happened, and despite your complete insistence that it did not happen, this can result in a deeply damaged sense of agency in the world and a complete lack of faith that you can do anything to improve your situation or change things to better suit yourself. In our yoga class, along with utilizing in invitatory language, we explicitly invite students to make choices around what feels best. We acknowledge that some of the poses we invite them to try may not actually work for their unique body. And for some students, the invitation to make these choices feels brand new and even radical. We, have never be, we may have never before been empowered in this way and discovering what does and does not feel good or comfortable in their body is very challenging and takes a lot of patience. Identifying how the body feels is very difficult for trauma survivors who have in many ways been avoiding noticing their bodies or neglecting to take care of their bodies for a prolonged period of time. Making choices to lessen pain, strain, or discomfort may be challenging still. As an example, sometimes in class we might hold Vrbhadrasana, the warrior pose, for a slow descending count of four. The slow counting by the instructor provides a thread for students to hold on to, letting them know that the holding will not last indefinitely. While students are breathing in the pose, the instructor might say, if you are experiencing any discomfort or pain, would you be willing to come out of the pose? Or as we hold the pose, remember that you're willing to bring yourself out of the pose whenever you are ready. While this kind of instruction might occur in any yoga class, we have found it to be an essential aspect of a trauma-sensitive class. And for this reason, these gentle reminders might be given multiple times during a session, posture after posture helping to support students and making clear effective choices based on their own experiences right in the moment. The students develop the ability to make choices for themselves based on their own internal feedback. They are learning that their feelings matter and that they can take effective action to make themselves feel better. Finally, nurturing an environment of choice can give students the freedom to try new poses or experiences. And the culture of a class honors the student's right to make choices. Students can try poses and practices that might once have been out of their comfort zone because they know they can always say no. As with other yoga classes, we hope that the lessons learned on the mat can be nurtured by the student and eventually applied to other settings and experiences. For example, a woman who has been attending trauma center classes for a few months reported trying a yoga class at her local studio. She said it felt like it was okay for me to, to sit quiet and rest and not do the poses that usually hurt my back and hips. I just went into child's pose and something and joined the class when I was ready. The student was clearly able to internalize the practice of choice and found it helpful in allowing her to take class at a public yoga studio. Another important aspect of the yoga classes at the trauma center is the development of community. As the author and trauma clinician Judith Herman has noted, trauma survivors typically feel deeply alienated from society. 
and it is if the only way to make sense of a terrible experiences is to believe oneself to be so different from everyone else that there is no really no way to relate and we often hear from our own students that the supported presence of peers, people in the same boat, people have a similar experience and are practicing yoga for similar reasons is a powerful benefit of the yoga classes at the trauma center. Conclusion, at the trauma center yoga program, we believe that yoga can support the process of healing for survivors of trauma and those suffering from PTSD. We hope to make further contributions of both training and research so that yoga can become more available and part of a holistic healing process for millions of men and women who have survived trauma.